I wish I had a bear costume, that would be really cute. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mel and I do YouTube videos on geography content and also some English content. So if that interests you, please follow along. You can also go and follow me on Instagram. It is at Mel Teaches You. I post a lot of funny reels and other posts basically every day. So you can go and check that out. Today, we are doing some more map work. We are going to be looking at bearing. Now, for bearing, you need one of these. One of these. A 360 degree protractor. If you only have the 180 degree protractor, the one that is half of this, you can still do bearing. It's just going to be a longer process and it might be a little bit confusing. So this will just make your life so much easier. I would really recommend investing in one of these. The second thing that you need is a ruler and a pencil. Now, the ruler that I use, let me just grab it. I like to use a clear ruler and that just helps you line everything up on the map properly. You don't need a transparent ruler, but I just think it makes life easier and also it needs to be a 30 centimeter full length ruler, not one of those silly short ones. And also a pencil, like I said. When measuring bearing, you are measuring the angle between north and another point on your map. Just like with my other map work videos, I'm going to give you a few steps to follow. And if you follow these steps, you will be able to do bearing perfectly. Number one, identify your starting point and your ending point. You do this by reading your question carefully. The word from in your question is going to tell you your starting point and the word to in your question is going to tell you your ending point. Once you have identified these two points, you can join them with a ruler and a pencil. For example, the question could read, measure the bearing from point A to point B. This means that we're going to start at point A. It had the word from, so that is going to be our starting point. And we are going to end at point B. Now, sometimes the word order can change. That's why you need to look at where the word from is and where the word to is. If the question says, measure the bearing to point C from point D, the same rules apply. The word from tells us that our starting point is point D. And that means that our ending point is point C. So we're going to start at point D and end at point C. Again, we'll join these two points with a ruler and a pencil. Now you might be thinking, why is the starting point even important? Why do we need to identify this from point? And that is because it's going to help us with step number two. Step number two is draw a vertical line through your starting point or from your from point. This is to help you line up your protractor. Make sure it is straight. And what I like to do is line up my ruler with the lines of longitude on my map. That way I know it is at the correct angle and it is perfectly straight. Step number three, place your protractor over your starting point with the zero degrees facing north. The center of your protractor should be on your starting point and it should line up with the vertical line that you have just drawn from step number two. Make sure that the numbers going clockwise around your protractor are increasing in a logical order. If they are not, you need to turn your protractor around. It's the wrong way. Step number four, measure clockwise. Not anti-clockwise, no, no, no. Clockwise, the way that a clock goes, that way. I'm on camera, is it this way? Doot, 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 doot. <laughs> you need to identify the line that you drew in step one. So this line that was joining your two points together. You are going to look where this line 
intercepts your protractor. And wherever this line intercepts, that is going to be your answer in degrees because you have just measured the angle. Now, if the two points are quite close together on the map, you might need to extend or extrapolate your line so that it actually does intercept with your protractor. It's not going to change the angle. The angle stays the same, but it is going to make it easier for you to measure if you just extend that line a little bit. So bearing is actually very straightforward once you know the steps. And it's quite easy to get this question right in a map work test. You need to think logically about it. You need to be aware of these common angles that you get. You should know more or less what a 90 degree angle looks like, what a 180 degree angle looks like, what a 270 degree angle looks like, what a 360 degree angle looks like. And this way you can approach this question logically. You should already have a number in mind, a rough estimate of what you expect to read on your protractor. Don't just blindly accept the answer that you see on your protractor. Take a step back and think about what answer you should expect to see. So for example, if you are measuring the bearing between point A and B, you should expect to see a number close to 90 degrees, not over 90 degrees. So if you get an answer on your protractor that is over 90, you know that maybe your protractor is the wrong way around or you have read incorrectly. Another example, if you are measuring the bearing between point C and D, you should expect a number between 270 and 360 degrees. If you are getting a number like 70 degrees, you know you have done something wrong or you have even measured in the wrong direction. Sometimes when it forms this large angle, you might be tempted to measure the small angle instead. That is why we have to remember to always measure in a clockwise direction. The only time when you should be measuring in an anti-clockwise direction is if you have one of those 180 degree protractors. If you have a 360 degree protractor, don't watch this part because it's just going to confuse you. But if you want to know how to measure with a 180 degree protractor, then you can watch for the next few minutes. If you have a 180 degree protractor, it cannot measure angles higher than 180, obviously. In the case of the C and D example, you would actually want to measure that small angle um, instead of the big angle. And what you would then do with your 180 degree protractor is measure the small angle and then say 360 minus the small angle that you measured. And that's actually going to give you your bearing as if you measured with a 360 degree protractor. And that is it for bearing. I hope you found it helpful and that you feel much more confident about this work now. Please remember to subscribe if you enjoyed this. Go follow me over on Instagram and leave me comments about any other work that you need help with. Have a good day. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.